Welcome to Invest. We talk about investing, finance, and professional women. As the current time of 8.37 a.m. on Eastern Time on June 16 on Thursday, the overall crypto market and the equity market on this Thursday morning is uh, relatively uh, you know, normalized uh, from the surge that we've seen yesterday post the Fed's FOMC rally. But now it's kind of normalized back down a little bit across the spectrum uh, that about 1.5% on all the indexes for Dow Jones, S&P, NASDAQ. Oil has also um, dipped a little bit uh, from the 120 mark that we've seen in the last 48 hours so far. Um, now reaching back down to more of a normalized level 113, which is still a very toughly high level. And as of this morning, the 10 year yield is spiking again. Uh, reaching to the you know another historical high level 3.4 percent okay and respect to the a lot of the international side of the house uh, seems like the bank of england um has you know decided to raise you know the the rates um for the fifth time in a row as you know inflationary pressure internationally is soaring in addition to that, I'm also seeing uh, some uh, consumer companies, uh, cosmetic giants, Revlon, which is, you know, uh, a makeup company, um, is filed for Chapter 11 bankruptcy protection. Uh, seems like the company, it's uh, struggling, uh, as obviously with respect to their product, uh, which a lot of it comes from petroleum-based products, right? Knowing the fact that, like, nail polish to, I don't know, acetone-based products to... I don't know, shampoos and all that stuff all come from some sort of a petroleum based product, which, you know, stem from, you know, uh, you know, the oil prices fluctuations. Right. So with commodity prices rising, you know, being, you know, to have the, uh, you know, the requirement to sustain the same um, cost for goods that they were having before, it will compress the margin. Uh, and with, you know, just the lack of consumer uh, purchasing behavior because of rising cost, uh, it's just a you know a double whammy effect onto you know really hindering the company's profitability, right? And with this level of um, you know inflationary pressure, with the oil prices surging the way it is, um, yeah, chapter eleven is uh, quite imminent, right? And with respect to some other, um, uh, I would say, I guess uh, assessment from the major banks. Uh, and also investors uh, collectively. Um, it seems like JP Morgan uh, is uh, depicting, uh, based on the strategist that has spoken recently, that we are um, on the cusp of breaking into recession. We are at the shallow ground of it right now, um, as we, you know, as this whole you know story unfolds. So we'll see how that goes. And also with respect to a billionaire investor, Orlando Bravo, which. Uh, is the partner at uh, Tomo Bravo, which is one of the largest technology investors in North America, uh, and also, um, you know, one of the pioneer in this space. Um, he believes that there's more pain to come in the technology sector, uh, which, you know, crypto is part of it. Uh, and obviously a lot of the SaaS, you know, services, uh, software as a service type of companies that, you know, is driving the bulk of the U.S. Uh, equity market. So that means we might see more um, lower levels uh, if we, you know, digress from this current level, right? And then uh, some other th news that I'm seeing is also um, seems like there are a lot of uh, uh, millionaires and billionaires are becoming becoming more cautious, uh, delaying uh, investments, delaying car purchases, uh, delaying their home purchases and etc etc seems like a lot of people are being more and more uh, cautious um, about this uh, current financial dynamics that we're seeing across the spectrum so a lot of the I guess uh, post-mortem reflection on what we've heard yesterday right but ultimately with respect to what we have collected or digested from the FOMC meeting yesterday um, is that uh, we are going to be taking more of an aggressive approach for this time with the 75 basis point height, right? And the next one, based on what Jerome has mentioned uh, already, uh, and he said this verbatim, that 75 basis point is a rarity, right? It doesn't happen all the time. And he foresee that the 50 basis point can be likely uh, in the following July FOMC meeting. 
contingent on obviously the job numbers, contingent on obviously, you know, with respect to the inflationary pressure that we're still, you know, kind of have to maneuver through over time. Uh, so as we get over that hump, we should technically see how that will progress, right? But we are in an interesting time period, you know, because we are, you know, slowly walking into summer and that's when travel seasons start to pick up, right? So we also have to be, you know, mindful of, um, you know, with respect to the activity among the hospitality and the travel industry, uh, which, you know, summertime typically, you know, based on historical, um, you know, experience, it, it drives some, uh, you know, some sort of a healthy rally uh, because of, you know, a positive CPI report. Um, you know, so despite the inflationary pressure, I think we should technically get mitigated. And also with respect to the tactical um, next step that Jerome has laid out for us, he has already mentioned that, you know, 75 basis point again would be unlikely, right? It will be more like a 50 basis point. So if we are going to be, you know, in alignment on the next one, we should technically see some sort of a rebound, right? Um, and today sell off is just, you know, I guess it's like the cry wolf type of uh, affectation. Like people are expecting this is going to be a bull trap, um, you know, buying on the on the dip and then you know subsequently you are going to a lower levels but ultimately we can only go to a you know a certain lower level you know within the normal you know course of uh, market dynamics right which is where we can uh, dive into the technical to identify those levels so let's just dive right into it obviously you know we are seeing a similar story right now uh, based on the previous two FOMC meetings and CPI reports and uh, so we see how that goes. So with respect to recording time of 8.44 a.m. on the Eastern time, we are at the $1,125 at the moment. You could see that clearly last night, we try to get down to all the way to 1,050, which is uh, an ominous level, right? Because like, if we break this current level, you know, as the support, 1,000, right? You have a long way to go to the next level. Obviously you'll you know, to kind of test the in, intimate, you know, intermediate level like the 950, the 850, 800, 750, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. We are having a negative inertia. You can see that clearly we could not even get, you know, enough of a push from the 23 out of 70. And you can see that we're coming down to a 20 out of 70. So, very, very dead in the water because of just, you know, lack of confidence across the spectrum not just for the crypto side, but for equity side as well. And then for Bitcoin, you can see that 20 or the 21,500 technically. So next level down will be somewhere around like 2,500, which is where we got to yesterday. You can see that the inertia is relatively negative, right? There's no signs of real curvature yet. We were trying to form a plateau yesterday, um, but obviously as people digest this further and also just negative you know, support from the major banks and economists. Um, and also you're seeing corporate companies with their guidance and their activity, you know, following for chapter 11. It doesn't really help with the case either, right? So driving more negative inertia. So if we break the 20,000, 18,500 will be where we're going. But obviously we'll get the flat numbers, right? 1,900, 1,850, you know, et cetera, et cetera. And then for classic, that about 10% so far. Uh, all the flat numbers, right? With the 1450 right now, so the next level is 14, next level is 1350, respectively. Dogecoin down about 10% as well. So all the flat numbers, right? With the 55 right now, next level is 50, next level is 45, et cetera, et cetera. You can see that clearly we could not even break above um, what was already kind of oversold, right? At 35 out of 70. So inertia is relatively dim at the moment. Um, Cardano, that about 8% so far, 50 cents. So right now, we you can see that we bounce from the 45, right? To try to get back up to the next level, which is 50. But negative inertia, so ideally coming back down to 45 and then 40, um, 35 respectively. Solana is doing something funky. It's up about 10% for some reason. Uh, we can see what why that is. Um, we basically bouncing like a ping pong ball in between levels, right? Next level up is 38 versus 33. So right now we're in between levels right now. So it's either we go up to the next level, which is 38 or go down to the next level, which is where we at right now. 
all the way down to 25 from here. XRP uh, up about 3% so far. There's some micro affectation driving all of these coins to be going up right now. Um, so right now it's trading on a flat number, right? Like we basically magnetically glue to around 30. So next level up is 35. Level down will be 25 from here. Polkadot up about 5% so far at 750. Um, so the flat numbers, right? 750, 850, 9 in an upward right downward will be seven dollars 650 respectively and i think they're likely going back down a little bit more can be possible based on the inertia that we're seeing i'll grind up about 2.22 percent so far at 31 cents um so going down to somewhere around like 30 cents 25 cents respectively like all the flat numbers Shiba Inu is at 8, 824 right now so going down to the next level 800 obviously 750 700 and then for polygon down about 10 percent all the flat numbers with the 40 cents at the moment 35 is next 30 cents respectively you can see that we are very negative in terms of inertia avax down about 11 percent so far with the 16 dollars at the moment so 16 is the first level 15 will be next level 1450 will be next level all the flat numbers respectively right Okay, so uh, that's it for the, for this morning updates. Um, seems like across the spectrum, a lot of the metrics are relatively negative, both on the media side, but also on the investor sentiments. It seems like despite the confirmatory signal that we got yesterday, um, it is an aggressive approach, obviously, but it's uh, one of those aggressive approach that you have to take. And now we just have to kind of watch how, you know, with, with this, you know, increase of rates, will be helpful onto fighting inflationary pressure heads on right and if it doesn't progress right and we actually digress despite the rates you know we're going to see more volatility coming um so today is just more of a type of a cry wolf type of affectation people just don't have the strongest optimism and i mean if you look at the news every news is pretty much like 80 percent negative um so something to think about right so appreciate you. Have a good day and take care. Bye.